Hello everyone, this video is about the domestic electrical circuits, the size of conductors that are used in the circuits, as well as the size or rating of protective device. Every new circuit has to be designed by calculating the maximum load of the circuit, choosing the right size circuit breaker, and calculating the right size of the cable. By taking into account its length, method of installation, ambient temperature, voltage drop, and few other factors, and then the whole circuit should be tested. I'm not going to do any of these calculations uh, in this video, instead I'd like to simply explain the construction of each circuit and what is the recommended size of cable and MCB for each one of these circuits. You can also find these information uh, in the on-site guidebook, so this is nothing new and probably most of electrical circuits in your home are designed in the same way and contain the same cable and MCB sizes as I will show in this video. So let's start with the simplest, the radial circuit for the socket outlets. On the top right corner you see a consumer unit and we've got four uh, socket outlets on this circuit. So the 2.5 twin inert cable goes from consumer unit to the first socket outlet and then from the first to the second and so on and it finishes at the last socket outlet. The MCB for this radial circuit should be 20 amp. Another commonly used so uh, circuit for socket outlets is a ring final circuit, or simply ring. So again, top right corner we've got the consumer unit with 32 amp MCB, and let's say we've got 6 uh, socket outlets on this ring. 2.5 twin inert cable from consumer unit goes to the first socket, then from socket to socket, and from last socket to the, uh, the cable goes back to the consumer unit. The two brown live wires from both cables we connect to the same 32 amp MCB. If we want to make a spare from any of the socket outlets, simply use 2.5 twin inert, run to the spare socket, and that's it. If you need more spares after the first one, then between the ring and the first spare you need to install 13 amp fused connection unit, FCU and then you can have unlimited number of sockets on this radial leg of the ring. If you connect too many appliances to this spare socket and they draw too much current, then obviously the 13 amp fuse uh, in FCU will be blown, unless the fuse is limited to 13 amp. 13 amp uh, by 240 volts, that give us 3120 watts. Nowadays we need cooker circuit mainly for the electric hops, as they draw quite a lot of current. This has to be dedicated circuit straight from the consumer unit. So we've got 32 MCB at the consumer unit, then we need to run 6mm cable, 6 mil twin inert cable to the 45 amp cooker switch, located at least 30 cm from the hop, and from this switch we run the same 6 mil cable to the cooker connection unit, that is usually under the hop. And then, with a flex resistant cable, we wire the hop to cooker connection unit. The next circuit that you might have at your home is a circuit for the shower unit. This also has to be dedicated circuit and RCD protected, as the cable run under the shower. So we run the cable from consumer unit to the pull cord switch that is located on the ceiling of the bathroom. Or if you don't like the pull cord switches, you can have wall mounted 45 amp switch, but this has to be somewhere outside the bathroom. And from the switch, we need to run cable straight to the electric shower. And now size of the cable and rating of the MCB depends on the rating of the shower unit. If the shower unit rating is up to 30 amp, uh, that is 7.2 kilowatts, then you need to use a 6 mil cable and 32 amp MCB. But if the shower is 40 amp, then you should run 10 mil cable and install 40 amp MCB. Uh, so the next circuit that I want to explain is the lighting circuit. Lighting circuits are always radial, they start at the consumer unit and finish at the last point. 
usually one mil cable and 6 amp MCB is enough for domestic installations, unless you've got really really long circuit. Uh, then 1.5 cable and 10 amp MCB is recommended. On a 6 amp MCB you can run 13 lamps with 100 watts uh, bulb at each lamp. Obviously reasonably is to connect only 10 lamps. But nowadays most people use an LED lights and these are rated around 5 watt each. So the total load is very unlikely to exceed the rating of the MCB or the cable. There are three methods of how you can run the lighting circuit. Unlike the power circuits, the lighting circuits are more complex as the cable not only goes from light to light, but also need to be split at some point to fit the switch in every lamp location. The first one is called a loop-in method and you can see it on this picture. The cable from consumer unit goes to first ceiling rose lamp and then from lamp to lamp and at every ceiling rose the live wire is split to fit the switch. So let's have a look at the ceiling rose uh, connection uh, closer, the place where the cable is split for the switch. So as you see at the ceiling rose you've got three cables, one from consumer unit, one is going to the next lamp and one is going to the switch. So all the earthen wires from all of these three cables go to the earth terminal on the right. All the brown wires from these three cables uh, going to the loop terminal in the middle, there are live wires. And the two blue neutral wires from uh, these two cables except the switch one going to the neutral terminal on the left. And the last blue wire from the switch cable going to the uh, line terminal on the right and you have to uh, put a brown sleeve on it, so just to indicate that it's gonna be live as well. And at the switch, uh, the green earth wire goes to earth terminal, the brown line wire goes to com terminal, and the blue neutral wire goes to L1. And that's how the ceiling cross should be uh, wired in the loop-in system, and this obviously is repeated in every uh, ceiling cross. If you've got the old color wires uh, instead of the new, uh, or mix all the new, uh, so here's a table showing uh, old color wires and the corresponding new color wires. So it might help if you're not sure which one is which. The second method is a junction box system. So we've got three lamps, not necessarily with the ceiling rows, uh, three switches for each lamp, and three junction boxes somewhere inside the ceiling. Each of these junction boxes work like, a, like the previous ceiling rows and the live wire from the switch is fit from there. In both of the systems you have only live wire at the switch, not the neutral. And there is a third method, this is my favorite, uh, the switch system. So the cable from consumer unit, uh, instead of uh, going to the ceiling rows or junction box, goes to the first switch, then from switch to switch, and the point where you split the cables is at the switch. Obviously it requires a deeper back box to accommodate all the wires and connectors, but the advantage of the system is that you don't need to use a step ladder if something goes wrong, as the, all the connections are at the switch. Or if you want to install a smart home switches, they require both live and neutral wires, then you've got all the wires in place. And also if you want to change the lamp, it's easy peasy, as there's only one cable going to the lamp. And the last circuit that I'd like to show is the dedicated circuit for the immersion heater. So we've got the consumer unit on the right, the hot water cylinder on the left, with immersion heater in it and a thermostat on top, and also between consumer unit and immersion heater we need to install 20 amp double pole switch. So the MCB for this circuit should be 16 amp and the cable size uh, from the consumer unit to the switch 2.5 twin and earth. Uh, also the cable from switch to the immersion heater 2.5 but flexible and heat resistant. I hope you enjoyed this video and you like it. Uh, if you want more videos please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.